So back in February, I said on Twitter that I was going to be taking a break from making YouTube videos for the rest of the month to focus on my schoolwork, something that has since become a monthly occurrence. And then this person replied to me saying, but Nathan, you make vines all the time, and vines are easier to make than YouTube videos. I feel like I don't properly appreciate a lot of things in life because I don't understand how they work or the work that went into making them. I never learned about all the generations of scientific breakthroughs that made it possible to invent the toaster. All I know is that I live in a world with machines that make toast and I'll get mad if they burn it. Even though I would probably also burn my toast if I had to roast over an open fire like my parents did, probably, right? I, I, I don't know when the toaster was invented. Thanks for nothing, history class. See, fellow high school students, I resent high school tool. I'm relatable. Subscribe. My point is that I think many people who watch YouTube videos don't understand all the work that goes into creating them. Specifically vlogs. I mean, it's just talking to a camera. How hard could it be? It's as hard for me as talking to girls. Seriously though, my audience is 80% female. When I make videos, I'm literally talking to girls. Anyways, I'm here to expose the innards of vlog making so that you can understand. Back in the day when YouTube was just starting up, most people recorded all their vlogs in one take. No editing. Having jump cuts at all was considered high production value. Then people started realizing they could say more things in less time if they just started talking faster and faster. And then jump cuts after every phrase became a necessity because nobody can talk this fast or very long without completely running out of breath. <sighs> Nowadays, the status quo of jump cuts is to actually overlap clips by several frames so that you have this constant stream of voice. But for that vlog to have the perfect flow, you have to time your cuts exactly right. See, that previous jump cut was too slow. And this one was too fast. Getting the timing right on every single jump cut for a video takes hours and hours. And knowing YouTube, by 2020, we'll probably have jump cuts between every single word. I really hope not. But that's not even the hardest part of making a vlog. The hardest part for me, anyway, is actually coming up with a topic and a script in the first place. You'd think that whenever I'm able to write about whatever fun, interesting subject I want, I'd be able to just write like the wind. But no, instead I have the same writer's block I get when I'm staring at the prompts for my college application essays. See, fellow high school seniors, I resent the college application process too. I'm relatable. Subscribe. There are some YouTubers who don't have this problem. For instance, daily vloggers. They just film their life and then upload the highlights at the end of each day. But as it so happens though, my life itself also has writer's block. Hi guys, so today I'm going to school. Just like I did yesterday. And the day before that. And the day before that. And now I'm procrastinating on my homework by watching YouTube videos. Oh, hold on. This is, this is Blimey Cow. This is one of my favorites. Um, Oh, wait, 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 that's not Blimey Kill. Who the heck is that? Does being a YouTube blogger sound intimidating yet? Watch out, you could screw the whole thing up before you even begin. As Faye would have it, the name I gave for my YouTube channel happens to be similar to the guy that eventually became the number one most subscribed on YouTube. So now everybody confuses me with PewDiePie. Heck, my dad confuses me with PewDiePie. Hey, PewDiePie. Oh my god. Dad, I'm the third Pew, not PewDiePie. That's right, you're not PewDiePie, and you'll never be as successful as him. Son, you're such a failure to me. What? Okay, you're not even my dad. You're just me with your Sunday clothes hipster glasses, longer hair, and whatever that scraggle is on your face. Hey, it took me four weeks to grow this. I plan my haircut and my shaving schedules around my YouTube videos so that I can play two different people who look sort of different by myself. I mean, I could have a friend do it, but I, I, I don't have friends. All right, that's not true. I have friends. Just give me a break. I need all the self-deprecating humor I can get. If you hadn't realized, I don't ever curse or make dirty jokes in my videos. Because if I did, my mom would ground me. Because if I did, I wouldn't feel proud of it. It's just too easy, you know? Like, you could make a dirty joke out of literally anything. I just want to try and force myself to be a little bit more creative than that. So basically, I'm just making vlogging harder for myself in yet another way. Because if dirty jokes are out, the only two main categories of humor I'm left with are self-deprecation, as I said, and puns. And my puns are terrible. They're putrid. Ah, yes! <coughs> okay, look, my point is not to make creating YouTube videos into hashtag the struggle. There's only so much I can complain about something that doesn't require any physical labor beyond setting up the tripod. And deep down, I really do love the process. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this at all. My point is that making YouTube videos on a regular basis requires three things. Lots of free time, lots of creativity, and a really strong work ethic. And many YouTubers who don't make videos full time only have one or two of these things at any given moment. And to be clear, hearing from people that they want you to upload more often is a huge compliment. It means people want to see more of this face for some reason. Just keep in mind, the next time you feel like tweeting your favorite non-professional YouTuber wanting to know why they haven't uploaded in a month, the reason is probably one, they have important things in real life keeping them busy. Two, they're struggling with procrastinating and not getting things done in general. And that's a habit they should probably fix in their personal life before they fix it in their hobby. Or three, they're just uninspired and there's unfortunately not really a cure for that. But you know what is a cure for everything else? Welcome! Oh, oh crap! <laughs> Hi there, I'm a song scout, aka the guy from the end of your grammar sucks 50. So if you're subscribed to me, you already know this, but if you're new, I usually don't make vlogs, I make music videos like this.
Those take even longer to make than vlogs because they require actually going outside. So I wasn't uploading very frequently. And I was talking to one of my good YouTube friends, Nathan, the third pew, and he told me, you know, if you want to upload more, you could always just make some vlogs in between the music videos. This video is what you get, Nathan. No, but seriously, this was actually what I was going to do for that birthday present I told you about. I just never got around to making it until now. But I'm really glad I did. It turns out making vlogs like this is a lot of fun. I had a great time filming with all these awesome people. Banana! <laughs> For those of you who don't know who The Third Pew is, he is absolutely one of my favorite YouTubers. Not only is he incredibly funny and insightful and entertaining in his videos, he also genuinely gets how to be YouTube famous. And that he doesn't really want to be. He, he doesn't take himself too seriously. He doesn't put himself up on a pedestal. He treats his subscribers like friends. Whenever one of his subscribers would walk up to him at VidCon this year, he would literally walk to a different part of the room with them or walk around outside with them to make sure that they could get good lighting on their selfie with him. Like, who does that? Nathan does. Nathan does that. But for all the things Nathan does, the one thing he doesn't also do is upload often. Part of that is because he has very high quality standards for his videos, but also part of that is he's he's a high school student. He has schoolwork to worry about. And I actually got the idea for this video back in February where the Twitter exchange I mentioned at the beginning of the video I saw actually happen. So in doing this parody, I also wanted to include a real message to the fans of YouTubers like Nathan, who make videos that are popular online but are compensated far less than the minimum wage per hour of work they put into them and also have very busy lives lives offline. Anyways, I hope you liked the video, Nathan. Good luck on those college applications, and thanks everyone else for watching. Help in the making of this video. <laughs> <laughs>